Try this example. I hope you gave that a shot. Start by redrawing the original picture. Where are the electrons coming from? Where are the electrons going to? Where are the electrons coming from? The tail of this arrow is on the pi bond. So the electrons are coming from the pi bond, so we erase the pi bond. This carbon just lost its pi bond, so it has lost electrons and it's become more positive. Where are the electrons going to? The head of the arrow is on the oxygen, so the oxygen gained a lone pair. Now, we usually don't draw the lone pair. However, since the oxygen has gained a lone pair, it's become more negative. And again, you should know at a glance that any oxygen with a negative charge has three lone pairs. Remember again that I'm hoping that you're not making any other changes in these molecules. Remember that the only modifications you should make are the modifications that are dictated by your electron pushing arrow. Now it's true that we could now draw some more resonance structures. We could put in new electron pushing arrows and draw more resonance structures. Uh, but until we put in those new arrows, we should not be making any more changes. So far, we've only shown this electron pushing arrow, so this is the only modification that uh, we should make so far. Um, and even though we could draw more resonance structures, we're not going to do, do that right now. We're still working on very basic problems, just trying to get the basics down. Let's check the net charges. The net charge on the left was zero. And on the right-hand structure, we have a negative one charge and a positive one charge, so the net charge was zero here as well. That confirms that we got the structures correct. Try this example. Start by redrawing the original picture. Where are the electrons coming from? The tail is on the pi bond, so the electrons are coming from the pi bond. So we erase the pi bond. This carbon just lost the pi bond, so it becomes more positive. Please remember again to adjust the charges at the earliest point possible. The whole reason we're doing this is to get the charges right. So as soon as you see an atom that's losing or gaining electrons, adjust its charge. Where are the electrons going to? The head is on this oxygen, so the electrons are going to a lone pair on the oxygen. Now, usually we don't show lone pairs. However, we do have to modify this formal charge. Since the oxygen is gaining a lone pair, it's going to become less positive, more negative. So since the oxygen is positive right now, if it becomes less positive, it's going to have zero formal charge. So this is the correct resonance structure. Let's check the net charges. In this picture, there's one positive charge, so the net charge is positive 1. And on the right-hand structure, there's one positive charge, so the net charge is positive 1. The net charges are the same, so that confirms that we're on the right track with our resonance structures. Again, I, hope, I really do hope that you are checking the net charges for every example that you do. Now, hopefully, maybe for some of you, these examples are going to be uh, a little easy or a little simple for you. But even if these are easy or simple, pretty soon we're going to be getting to hard problems. So start building good habits right now. Start building the habit of uh, checking the net charges for every picture, even on these easy problems, so that you'll be in the habit of doing that on the harder problems as well. Why don't we compare this example with the example that we did previously? They're very similar, but there is one difference. Um, notice that in both cases, the head of the arrow is on the oxygen. So in both cases, the oxygen is gaining a lone pair. And in both cases, we didn't actually draw the lone pair. We don't normally draw lone pairs. Notice that in this case, the oxygen started off with a zero formal charge. So when it gains electrons, it gets a negative formal charge. But in this case, the oxygen started with a positive formal charge. So when it gained electrons, it just got up to a zero formal charge. Even though this oxygen was gaining electrons, it did not become negative because it had already started with a positive charge. Remember again that we can only change the charge by one step. If the charge starts off at zero, we can move it one step more negative to be a negative one charge. Or if the charge starts at a positive one charge, this is a positive one charge, it can become one step more negative which means a zero formal charge.
but there's no way we can go from a positive charge all the way to a negative charge. That would be two steps. That would be going from positive one to zero and from zero to negative one. That's not how electron pushing arrows work. So if you're going to get the correct charge in your new resonance structure, you have to pay close attention to the resonance structure that you started with. In both cases, these oxygens were becoming more negative. Uh, but in this case, it didn't actually make the oxygen negative, it just made it less positive. So I hope that was clear. I hope that you'll carefully compare these two examples, and I hope you can see um, why the charge on this oxygen was a zero formal charge, but the charge on this oxygen was a negative formal charge, even though in both cases they were gaining lone pairs. It all depends on what charge you started with. Um, let me make one more point. The convention is that the head of the arrow, when you're gaining a lone pair, should be pointing at the atom. Um, the convention is that the head of the arrow should not be pointing at the positive charge. Um, so try to get in the habit when you're drawing the head of this arrow here, don't draw it pointing at the positive charge. The convention is that when an atom is getting a lone pair, the head is just pointing at the atom. That's just the conventional way of drawing the arrows. Try this problem. We always start by redrawing the original picture. Remember, don't try to draw the new picture from scratch. Don't try to draw the new picture from scratch. Try to, um, instead, start by redrawing the original picture. Where are the electrons coming from? Well, the tail of this arrow is on the pi bond. The electrons are coming from the pi bond, so we erase that pi bond. And as soon as we can, we adjust the charges. This carbon just lost a pi bond. So it's becoming more positive. The head of the arrow is on the nitrogen. So the nitrogen is gaining the electrons as a lone pair. Well, we don't usually draw the lone pair, but we do have to adjust the charge on the nitrogen. Since it's gaining electrons, it should become one step more negative. Or in this case, that really means one step less positive. So it's going to go from plus one to a zero formal charge. Even though the nitrogen gained electrons, it did not end up with a negative charge because it started with a positive charge. You can only move in increments of um, one charge. We should always check to make sure the net charges are balanced. The net charge on this picture is plus one, and the net charge in the right-hand structure is plus one. It does balance. Again, notice that the convention is that this head should not be pointing at the positive charge. It should be pointing at the atom to indicate that the atom is getting a lone pair. Then we repeat one of the key ideas. For every single arrow, you have to ask yourself two questions. Where are the electrons coming from? Where are the electrons going to? Wherever the electrons are coming from, that is going to become less negative. And wherever the electrons are going to, that's going to become more negative. Try this example. I hope that you paused the video and gave that a shot. I hope that you began by redrawing the original picture. Don't try to draw the new picture from scratch. Where are the electrons coming from? Well, the tail of this arrow is on the lone pair, so we know that the electrons are coming from the lone pair. So we should erase the lone pair, since the electrons are moving away from there. And since this oxygen is losing its lone pair, it must be becoming more positive. Where are the electrons going to? The head of the arrow is in the middle of the sigma bond. We know that that means it's going into a pi bond. So we put a new pi bond here. And since this carbon just gained a pi bond, it's gained electrons. So it must have become less positive. So it ends up with a zero formal charge. So we end up with a double bond between this oxygen and this carbon. For the last few minutes, we've been doing examples of taking electrons from a pi bond and making them into a lone pair. So what I wanted to do here was switch gears for a second and go back to the idea that we saw earlier. Um, so earlier we had seen how to take a lone pair and make it into a pi bond. 
and that's what this example is, taking a lone pair and making it into a pi bond. Remember that we can never take a lone pair and make it into another lone pair. So you definitely should not have taken a lone pair on this oxygen and made it into a lone pair on the carbon. That never happens. The head here is in the middle of the sigma bond. That reminds us we're making a pi bond, not a lone pair. Now notice that this molecule is quite a lot more complicated than any of the molecules we've worked with yet. Uh, in fact, if you're still at the beginning of your um, OCHEM class, you might never have even really seen a diagram that looks like this. Um, but I hope that you can see that even if you've never seen a diagram like this, as long as you understand how to interpret the electron pushing arrows, you can still draw the correct resonance structure. It doesn't matter whether you've seen this type of structure before or not, the interpretation of the electron pushing arrows is still the same. Uh, I've been saying that we should always check the net charge, so let's check that here. The net charge in the left-hand structure is plus one, and the net charge in the right-hand structure is plus one. Those are the same, so that's more confirmation that we got this correct.